everybody. How you doing, man? It's your boy, Brian Polito. I'm just letting you know that we're about to go live on the brand new crowdfunding panel. And I got with me, this is behind the scenes. I got with me, check out who I got with me. I got our moderator, Mr. Billy Tucci. What up? Look at him. He just finished a master class at NYU Film. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> and I wanna... We got writer Mike McLean. We got illustrator Joe Gomez of La Muerta. And uh, we're about to walk in and roll up, on, roll up on people, you know, like coffin style, coffin in the house. Are you ready? Damn, boy. Born for this moment. Yes. I'm going to moderate it's... my first panel ever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know. I love it. Billy roped himself into this panel. It was, did, there was I no did. way it wasn't going to happen. I did. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll be good. It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. Yep. I love you, man. I love you too. I love you too. Two legends. Crazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I had no choice, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of time do we have? We won't whirl in until the actual time. A couple more minutes. What else? Mike, you guys ready? You know, we're, we got we're all a, set. <laughs> we're all set. <laughs> Creative team of La Muerta right McLean. here. McLean. 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 How do you say it? McLean. McLean. That's even better. I like yeah. it. McLean. McLean rhymes with more stuff. McLean. McLean. He's so McLean mellow about it. McLean from McLean. That's right. That's, that's like good skirts. Man, right there. I'm not sure if you're an Irishman. I've been both. I like how Scotch Irish. I like how Billy rolls Scotch. up. He's like the, the, the film crew of one. This is, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like Robin Mead in the that's right. early 90s when she was running around filming or something. <laughs> <laughs> How's uh, Phoenix Comet uh, Fan Fusion going for everybody? Phoenix Fan Fusion is great. Fans are awesome. It's a wonderful experience. Having a good time, guys. Right on. It's amazing. My great time, as always, here at the hometown. Conference. Mike and I actually yeah. met at this show at this point yeah. seven, seven years ago. Nice. We, had made a, we had made a produced a short film for Garth Ennis, if you could believe it. What? Uh, him and uh, another person put some money up. We did this, and he attended a panel related to that. And uh, we connected, and I actually went ahead and read some of his mystery work, which floored me. Oh, and, interesting. Yeah, we just started vibing. We definitely have, oh, there's Denny O'Neill, shit. Oh, yeah. Denny O'Neill. Batman editor, writer. Today's, today out. is official Denny O'Neill. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's official Denny O'Neill day. Mayor gave the keys. There you go. He's dressed in black. That's right. <laughs> Danny O'Neill is also sworn to the black. That's right. That's right. Guys, I think it's that time. Let's roll up. Let's right. do this. Come on, let's go. What is our room? Let's spinal tap this shit right now. <laughs> Are we A, B, or? Should we B? We're doing it. Rolling up all there, in black. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Right on. Right on. We need peace on earth, man. Scott, Make that shit Scott. happen. It's a I'll work on that. Are you ready to get woken up, motherfucker? Welcome. If you're here for the crowdfunding, indie comics, coffin panel, you're in the right place. If not, you may not want to be here. But when you be, you will be sworn. You will be sworn no matter what. Let's, we're going to get our ass together. It's going to take 49 of the 50 minutes, and then we'll start the panel. <laughs> uh, All right, we're rolling. Well, we actually have a very special moderator. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to introduce him. He is the... Brother from another mother that I never wanted, but when I got him, I fell in love with him. We met a long time ago. He'll probably be very happy to tell you the story. Yeah. The one and only, independent yeah. fellow independent comics legend, Mr. Billy Touche. Yeah. I am also sworn. Yes, and Billy oh, is sworn. Oh. Hell yeah. Since 1993. That's right. That's good stuff. So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you, Brian, for letting me moderate this. Uh, I had no choice in the matter. He didn't. He didn't. <laughs> let me be real. Yeah, let yeah. me be perfectly clear. Yeah. I had my first. Uh, we, I have a. Uh, you know, I'm a self-publisher too. Um, Brian has helped me out tremendously. He's even helped us out with our crowdfunding books. And I got so enamored by it that I created a a, a, a YouTube web uh, page. Uh, I'm sorry, YouTube channel, crowdfunding comics, with my partner Niall Scala. And Brian was gracious enough to be our very first guest. So first thank you. victim. First victim. Not <laughs> guest victim. So, uh, but we're here. Um, I want to just welcome. We got Mike McClan. Do I say McClain? McClain. 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 Of course, the Grand Poobah, the King of Kickstarter, Mr. Brian Polito. Yeah. And of course, my new pal, J. 
Joel Gomez. Hey guys. Joel. So Joel is, is the penciler and the inker of La Moretta. That's right. And Joel works on the Lady Death books. Wait, hey, you know what? Can we just take a moment? We'll let Mike. Uh, we'll do some self intros. Is that yep, okay? Because yes, it would be great for people to get a three dimensional uh, oh, sure. view of folks. And Mike, would you mind starting soon? Hi, um, I'm Mike McLean. I'm the writer on um, all of the the co-writer and all the coffin properties with Brian uh, La Muerta, Hell Witch, and of course Lady Death yes, and sir. Zach the Zombie Exterminator. And upcoming Extreme Horror Project 2020. Yes. Well, I didn't accidentally give away the title. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Uh, my name is Joel Gomez. I'm currently the illustrator of La Muerta from Coffin Comics. I've been with these guys for the past five years. It's been a hell of a ride. Also, the future illustrator of Extreme Horror Project 2020. Uh, that's all they're going to get out of it? So uh, for now. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's going to be extreme. <laughs> it's going to be, be horror. horror. Yeah. And it's a project. It's 96 pages. 96. Nice. I'm Brian, uh, uh, founder of Coffin Comics, and probably part of the reason you're here is for educational component. You're interested in crowdfunding, have a background in crowdfunding. We have produced 15 projects. Uh, through using Kickstarter as a funding model. We've delivered those projects typically within eight weeks of a close, and we have raised to date somewhere in the area of $2.4 million for comic books on Kickstarter. Woo! Absolutely. <laughs> Absolute blessing from the comic book gods. Yeah, Incredible. and, and uh, I, th I, th I think it's, a, it's all a joy. Again, I see your fiends out here as well, but any of those that are wanting to learn how, how to do their own books, this is the man to listen to. And he's got some great advice. We're going to ask him some questions. We're going to talk about, if we can, uh, our future projects. Because right now, yes. um, the Ascension, La Moeta, the Ascension is, is live now. Yes, so right now we're running a Kickstarter currently. And by the end, I'd like to give you a flyer. It's called La Muerta Ascension. It runs through June 14th. And uh, the gentleman here would be happy to tell you some about the storyline of that. Sure. Um, if you're not familiar with La Muerta, it's a revenge story originally, where she had to avenge her family um, from a very brutal crime cartel. In, this, um, in these next chapters, um, an old enemy has returned um, by supernatural means. It's not only a, a vigilante crime story, but there's a, a very heavy supernatural element. Um, we think of it as uh, like Robert Rodriguez, if he directed a comic book, sure, um, yeah. that, that very much is an idea of what La Muerte like is like. Ascension, again, is this old enemy coming back. Um, La Muerte is a little bit lost. She's a soldier without a mission, and she decides to um, help a fellow vigilante, uh, a loco. Loco. Um, try to, to rid the vigilante. Vigilante, or uh, luchador vigilante, try to rid the, uh, the community of, uh, of these uh, drug cartels and they run into this whole supernatural enemy. Anything to add, young man? Yeah, actually, I gotta admit, it's a fun ride only because there's so many things infused into La Muerte that a storyline that uh, we typically don't see. Uh, in this particular storyline, we have uh, things from Mexican culture and kind of uh, mysticism involved. Uh, we have a previous story, like we had a brujo who conjured up La Llorona, which is a kind of a Mexican folklore tale, you know, parents tell to their kids when they stay up too late, they're like, you better go to bed or we're going to have La Llorona come get you, you know, and it's like, it's just one of these things that we use and infuse into our comics, you just don't see anywhere else, so it's, it's nice to, to, to bring that kind of fusion to that thing, being a Mexican-American myself, uh, growing up in LA, uh, all of these things, I try to conjure up and bring into these amazing stories these two guys put together. So it's just a, it's a it's a real ride. It's a blast. And Mike gets all the credit on Ascension. I think uh, for this particular story piece, you and I sat in the warehouse of HQ and yeah. kind of broke down some story premise and some, at least from an editorial perspective, what the heck should happen and cut you loose. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, and Brian is very generous in that regard. He's he's very helpful in the story editing. It's always a fun ride. It's always it is always fun. That's true. It's a, it's very delicious. You know, that's the fun thing about comics. I happen to be lucky enough to like all of it, but definitely the creation and working with the guys is is quite the delicious, the most delicious part of it. I would say, you know, concocting it and then bringing it, marketing and promoting it and bringing it to life is just another fun element. But uh, yeah, the sweetest part is the creation. Yeah, it's like a brotherhood, you know. Oh yeah, and a family. Yeah, without to, a it doubt. takes a family to make such something so amazing. What I love about La Moretta, and I, I, are you guys familiar with La Moretta? Have you guys oh, right? Yeah. Isn't oh, cool. it how right. visually striking she is? Yeah. Like with the sugar skull and everything. Yeah. Now, now, so how did that? 
How did you guys come to the point to like, what about this? I got this store. Like, how did, how did, was the birth? Well, thank you for that question. I happened to be in Tucson uh, during the All Souls procession which is the Mexican-American celebration of Dia de los Huertos in 2011. And uh, totally, you know, the sugar skull stuff and calavera just started showing up in pop culture a little more powerfully. But I, I went to um, the All Souls. At the time, I knew that I wanted to work on a revenge story. I, I love pure revenge stories like Death Wish uh, and uh, I felt in my mind at least that I saw a couple of things that could be told differently, particularly ruminating on the cost to your soul for pursuing revenge, which particularly in the first storyline we looked at. And I went to this All Souls procession, it was extraordinarily emotional because people were, they were both celebrating and very sad about the loss of their loved ones, and that's what that celebration is about. And I, I, it really struck me that this particular backdrop could be interesting. And, I actually just started doing the research and more and more it became apparent that this would be very, very rich because it hadn't been seen in this particular way in pop culture. And I mean, I think it's been proven out in ways that you guys will learn in the near future that this particular storyline a, a resonate, could resonate even broader. Yeah. And this, welcome. This, welcome, this is the third uh, this was, actually, Ascension is the fifth chapter. The fifth chapter. The fifth okay. chapter in uh, La Muerte story. Excellent, excellent. Now, okay, now if I may, you have such a varying degrees. Like, again, you took us, or Fran, I think, took, your wife took Deborah and I, my wife, to that the following year. Yes, we in did. In Tucson. And again, it is so moving. Have you guys gone to that uh, in Tucson? It's a, it's a parade. It's it's. And everyone's holding the photos of their loved ones, and it is people are crying. People hug my my wife was her her best friend had just passed away, and she ended up connecting with another woman, and they were hugging, you know, like just this. Uh, it was this amazing experience. It was a really spiritual like, it is. awakening. So the All Souls and, Procession is a community event. It happens in a lot of cities, particularly around the south, so, uh, southwest, mm -hmm. and to a lesser degree, strangely, in Mexico, in a different way, in Mexico. And yeah, it's, a, it's an opportunity for people to either celebrate it's, uh, the loss of children or the loss of adults on different days. Mm -hmm. And people come at it in many different ways. Like yeah. we brought you out there for that particular purpose. Uh, to, and I've done that as well. Like I've had, we all have had loss, right? And I'll, I'll actually bring that loss and try to further deal with it or try to get more complete with it. And I do recommend, it's always the first weekend in November in Tucson. It's incredible, it's totally transformative, and about 300,000 people are there. It's yeah. a community event, there's no corporate sponsors, it's you know, for the people, by the people. And I, I love that, that with the character though, that if you have this revenge story, but then again you have the, the, the regret, and then, you know what I mean, and there is this sense of loss, yes. and if she's out there, you know what I mean, and the repercussions of, oh, just how to, you, you, you know what I'm saying? With, well, let's ask Mike to speak sorry, on that Mike particular case, yeah, topic. I, I, well, I, I, I think what you mentioned about the holiday itself is really interesting because there's this juxtaposition of, of this kind of, we think of almost as horrific uh, images of skulls. And, and, yes. And, but at the same time, they're celebrating the life of their loved ones lost. Um, I think this character kind of takes that because her, her family was lost and she sees this as an opportunity to avenge them. So it's almost like she's celebrating them as she's putting on the makeup, and, and she sees that it's it's um, you know kind of her task in life. Um, it's brought forward by a Santa Muerte um, in the first issues. Anybody she, familiar with the Santa Muerte? Saint so, Death. So Saint Death is the actual patron saint of the underworld. Mm -hmm. uh, it's and, and to to a certain certain degree, she's kind of become a figure to the downtrodden, like maybe the people who are kind of ignored in society. Um, some criminals, some people That's who are just lower yeah. lower economic, and, yeah. and they, it, she's kind of become this, this figure for them, and I thought that was an appropriate character. We've always been very, we've been very, uh, we've always put effort to be very respectful of that, and, and, yep. and not exploitative. Not exploitative. Yeah. But, so yeah. that's that's kind of uh, the the figure that calls her to um, to avenge her family and later on to to avenge some other injustices. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's like she's become death incarnate. In yeah. Way, you know, and, and but then this hero, the downtrodden, and cares for the ones, these forgotten ones. It's 
It's wonderful. So I, I want to say that you guys, it's, it's running now to June, to, to June 14th. June 14th. This, the success that Brian has with his Kickstarters and how he does these things and he's so organized and the whole Coffin Comics crew is that book comes out and the people know they're done. The books are complete. So the books, and that's something for all you, if you guys can get your book done as much as possible when you release it because I've pledged Kickstarters that are that four years now. I'm waiting on that. I think we all and have show of hands. <laughs> Who's like pledged the fur kick and never get it? Yeah, I think we've all had those, right? Yeah, yeah. don't be that. Yeah, yeah our be commitment is uh, we ship at the latest at the begin the ship at eight point eight weeks after close. And well, a, a testament to your organizational skills and the company itself and the product you deliver. How long did it take for La Moretta to, to be funded for its initial funding? Back in the day? No, no, this, this for Ascension, uh, when you launched it. Well, we got funded in under two minutes. Under two minutes. <laughs> yeah. and that, but that's a testament that they know the quality of the books. And, you know, first impressions are a big thing. So when that book came out, wow, oh my gosh. I remember, you know, what those it's amazing. Done, it's yeah. stunning. Thank you. Stunning. So, uh, so please, again, please take, we'll, we'll hand out flyers if you guys can. Uh, now, next, so that's June. That book right. ships. Then next we have August. Right. Now, now, come August, if I may, is Lady Death, Blasphemy Anthem number one. That's right. Can you, now, who's a Lady Death fan? I mean, Thank you. right? Yeah. I wouldn't you be here if it weren't for Lady Death, too. <laughs> or you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be here. So can you give us a little a little thing on Lady Death, uh, Blasphemy Anthem? Uh, I'm going to defer to Michael. What I'm going to say at the top from a promotional point of view is we're committed to doing four Kickstarters a year on a quarterly basis. We are uh, right about shipping Scorched Earth. There's a lot of preparation. There's a lot of moving parts. It, it'll be out, shipped to you in your hands on around June 7th. Our current methodology is we actually um, pick, box, everything, and then we spend two solid days running the postage to ship. That way, everybody reasonably gets things in a similar period of time so that we don't get customer service ink, like, Hundreds of customer service inquiries say, where is mine? It's like, well, it's all within the same period of time. Um, Lady Death Blasphemy Anthem is the 10th chapter, and I'm going to let Mike give you a sense of what it's about. Well, um, Blasphemy Anthem is kind of a continuation, or it is a continuation of Scorched Earth, right? So we see Lady Death has come to Earth, and she's no longer in hell at this point. Present day. Present day, and she's there to um, deal with this kind of global threat called the Trinity. Um, she's been roped in by this group, um, and the, 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 the fighting component of this group the, is called the Swarm. The um, Swarm. The Swarm. <laughs> and so, <laughs> last week, that that is, really, is really the point at which the story culminates in the showdown between the Swarm and this very powerful trio of kind of elemental um, beings um, with, with incredible destructive power. Um, it like, is like epic, epic power. Like, We're talking about demolishing, you know, mountains and, and using, you know, tidal waves of Earth to, to and destroying entire cities. Um, this is, I will say, on a personal level, the hardest thing I've ever written in my life. Um, Why is the it idea, the, the scale, the, is... the scale. I, I'm more of a smaller story guy in, at heart, so this was, a, and I really appreciated the challenge. I like, you know, throwing a challenge at me. So the idea that you have all these moving parts, all these different characters, and you have to give each one of those characters their moment, and you have to give each one of their characters, and it has to be satisfying, that's, that's I have a lot of respect for those, those, you know, those big Marvel to it's do insane. story. And yeah, so this is really the hardest thing I've probably ever written. It sounds like it's gonna be the hardest thing your, your artist has ever drawn, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've, we've gotten a lot of pages, can you say? And yeah, it's, got, I mean, it's illustrated, yeah. So the whole thing is illustrated. Diego Bernard, an illustrator on both Hell Witch and Scorched Earth, returned. He completely rose to the occasion. There's awesome. you know, crazy double page spread battle scenes. This is, it's kind of fun. What I would like to add too is it's sort of fun with the character Lady Death to step into different genres a little bit. So I think as Lady Death comes to Earth, we are kind of stepping into superheroes. Although ours are R-rated, they curse, there is sex, and um, they're all horror or supernatural based. And I can't promise that we'll stay in that genre. I could actually tell you that we're actually moving Lady Death back to pure horror next year, however, 
this is a real celebration of some of the stuff that we all grew up in love, those Marvel anti-heroes of the 70s, like uh, Son of Satan, Blade, Morbius, all that kind of fun stuff. Can you fill us in on some of the Swarm, some of the main sure. ca you know, characters of, of the members of the Swarm? The Swarm. The Swarm. <laughs> well, let me, let me refer, defer right back to you if I can. I'm trying to think of that. Uh, so, so, many, I'm trying to think this so in this action. particular, let me set this present day Earth up. 20 years ago, Lady Death had an epic battle in Manhattan with a woman, with an entity called Atrocity, the mother of abominations. You will see this pictured in the story. In the outcome of that battle, laid a major American city to waste. In the blame, was squarely put on Lady Death's shoulders, but it was not true. And then Lady disappeared, Lady Death disappeared. So if you're reading our current storyline, you will see whether it be Nightmare Symphony or in our earlier Chaos Rules, you will see that Lady Death was cursed to sleep for over two decades. So in her absence on Earth, things have changed. Um, our super, super powered people are called un unnaturals and they're hunted and they're hiding and they can't be seen. And it's in this environment that Lady Death returns and she aligns with a clandestine organization, the 13th floor. There's, you ever hear of the 13th floor? There's never 13s in elevators, but yeah. we say there is. And it's above 13th floor. You'll have to read, you'll see. And within that is a strike team, whether it be Hell Raiders, in this case, the assembled group to try to face off the epic villainy of the Trinity is the Swarm. Specialized skills, including Zack and Zane Xander of Zack the Zombie Exterminator. Nice. They're yeah. totally needed. And if you haven't read about them, that's okay. You'll learn more about them. We will introduce Lady Satanus, the Devil's Daughter, Capricious Princess who has a soft spot for human beings, particularly sexually. <laughs> she's a suc succubus. Can't tell if she's good or bad. Who else would you add to this one? We have Atticus Marrow. Oh, that's awesome. Atticus Marrow is, let's say, I'm going to get comic booky, is our equivalent of a Doctor Strange. He is a, uh, I think they call Doctor Strange a Sorcerer Supreme, and we call our guy a Supreme Sorcerer. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Atticus Marrow. And of course, you can never forget Wargoth, which is sort of our equivalent of a black metal version of Conan, the barbarian, who has near invulnerability. Who else would, well, and of course, there's Hellslinger and Kayaka, the sworn, all supernatural beings. Are they up to the task? So that's a little bit of who the sworn is. It's gonna be a summer blockbuster. Oh my god! It's I a know, summer right? blockbuster. Like, yeah, if you if you <laughs> add it, you it will, is all that's you know. These will be filmed, and they will just. Oh my god! So cool. let me ask all you guys and gals by a show of hands: How many of you guys and gals have been reading comics at least ten years? There you, go. you you get where we're headed, right? Yeah. Like this is a love letter yeah. to our Secret Wars, Crisis on Infinite Earths. I admit, sue me, but it does have, <laughs> it does have cursing. It does have sex and violence, and it is, you know, by the coffin crew. There may be body parts ripped off. <laughs> that's true. And beaten. And beaten. That's true. So we haven't even talked about, part. I mean, that's just the, tr the epic villainy of the Trinity. We haven't discussed the Halo Corporation. But we don't want to get ahead of our, ourselves because you will be about to read Scorched Earth. Billy, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Oh, no, no. So we, right. So we have Scorched Earth is, is, is shipping in a, in, a, in a week or so. Yeah. Right? Then we yeah. have... Within two weeks, 2,500. Right. La Morenta is running now. Yeah. The, then Lady Death, uh, Blasphemy is anthem number one. Correct. Is, is August 8th. August 8th. That's out. Launch. When... Okay, Big so... Artists. so and, and you're starting to now interweave other characters in the Coffin We Con couldn't resist this. So I that, apologize. Now, is there any is, 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 is there any chance that your October book with Hellwitch? Hellwitch. So will, will Hellwitch the Forsaken number one? The Forsaken in October. <laughs> Can you give us a little bit of insight on that? Because my wife opened that book up and she 
blushed. And then, but she was giggling, and she was like, oh my god. Oh, and I, I don't know, I might have turned her on or something, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, Both the comics are aphrodisiacs as well. Because he's got such a diverse, you know, and then, Hellwitch, I bet, are you guys familiar with Hellwitch? How many Anybody of you get into Hellwitch? If not, <laughs> so can you please, because that's just balls out. Awesome. Mike, and balls could be out in that yeah, book. Yeah. <laughs> well, Brian, would you mind, maybe Brian, awesome. if you could give us a little, give them a, uh, an insight on Hellwitch, and then Mike could maybe talk about the Forsaken number one. So if you could give it back. We introduced Hellwitch in Lady Death Damnation game number one, way back in 2015. In Hell Witches of the Hell Born. And what we say in our version of Hell is that there's the natural citizens, the natural denizens of Hell are called Hellborn, and they're raised in hives. And there's countless hives throughout Hell. And it really is the demons and, and Satanus and the Archdukes, they're all interlopers. They're not natural. So imagine it's sort of like Native Americans and then the English come colonize. So demons are colonizers in our hell. Hell witch began, uh, born to the hive from a hive queen, born of, born of one of many thousands, destined to be a lowly sanitation worker. In the initial storyline called Hellborn is about her rise, of passed through all the castes in her hell hive to rise up and potentially to rival the queen. We told that in the first issue, the first chapter, and we introduced her love interest, Gotha. Unfortunately, something happened which you'll have to read. We actually have issues down, it's booth number 752 if you don't have them yet. And that sets up our next chapter, The Forsaken. So Forsaken picks up a little while after um, the the, the first Hell Witch story. And so at the end, and I'm hoping I'm not giving anything, but I can't really describe Forsaken without giving it away, Hell Witch um, comes into contact with the sorcerer Seance. He's a very powerful sorcerer in Hell. And he kind of takes her under her wing. But as he is training her, he basically is telling her that she's too soft. She she's, has, hasn't given up um, the hellborn version of humanity. She, yeah, is, she, has, she still has too much empathy. She has too much empathy. Which must be destroyed. And, and so he casts her out. So here is this this character who, who has never been apart from her hive. She, she rose again, like Brian was saying, from the lowest level, the lowest cast, to the, to the hive, you know, to, to a warrior. But she's never been without the hive. She's cast out into the, the wastelands of hell. Right? So, Within those wastelands, she finds the remnants of the hive that she kind of helped destroy. So she feels that she needs to protect them. There is another hive, the Kilzan, that want to basically decimate. They want to commit the final genocide of Hellwitch's hive. So she reluctantly, and maybe even to her own, she probably even has reluctance in her own heart, becomes their protector um, alongside um, another character that, that will become very close to her. So I can promise that it will be as brutal, um, um, as naughty, as, uh, as, as hell witchy as the first uh, installment. Well, I think our, like, our, our marching orders was more. More. <laughs> wow. Now, who's the artist on that? Diego Bernard. Diego is so Diego is doing... Lady Death? He is. How many books is wow. he doing for you? He does five, four to five pages a week, every week. Wow. We actually, we have to, we, ha we have to work hard to stay in front of Diego. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. I, I consider myself um, somewhat of a slow writer, not like I, if you put me on the spot, I'll get it done in the deadline every time. But I'm somewhat of a slow writer. Diego is, uh, is making me, turn my wheels a little faster, so, and it's good. It's a good, again, I like the challenge. But yeah, it's without fail, it's true. It's like, he's coming. He's on page 14 of six. <laughs> it's exactly oh, like this. Wow. We, we gotta get our shit together, he's on page 14. Right, he is on page 14 it's of like the first monster in the movies, he's coming. He's, yeah, if you saw It Follows, it he follows, keeps coming. Yeah, he wow. keeps coming. <laughs> yeah, he's on page 14, and then we, we flip back, we're flipping back to Lady Death, and we're working out Lady Death 12, right, as we speak, frankly. Wow. Anyway. And I know that, thank you for listening to some of the story elements 
And I know you're here in part two for an educational component. So that, that's Hell Witch Forsaken, uh, launching on Kickstarter in October. And I can tell you now that uh, Momerta Chapter 6 will be uh, offered next May. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, well, we're uh, mostly done. With I mean, for, yeah, I mean, literally, yeah, we're getting, coming to the close. That's the other thing, too. Like, this is like a pro tip. You know, for us in our first year of uh, using Kickstarter as a publishing model, everything had to work, and we needed every single solitary penny just to kind of keep the wheels rolling and to make sure things would come out. Now that we have a little more capital, we do what we say we'll do, which is we reinvest it back into the story yeah. so that we can get ahead. And um, yeah, so that's why we're like, although Lamar to Chapter 6 will be offered next May, it's almost done. It's mostly done. But that gives us an opportunity to flip over to our next project together, which is, again, Extreme Horror Project 2020. Yes. And uh, we can, all we can do is tease you about it, really. I guess what, what can we say in gloved terms? Um, I could say it's two 48-page chapters to yeah. tell the story. I can say, so that makes it, yeah, uh, 98 pages of story and art. Um, it is what it says. It is extreme. It is horror. Um, I could say I've been taking a deep dive doing a lot of the research for it. Uh, looking at the, the plot line and everything we put together, it's the truly beautiful just up against the really horrific. Yeah. Um, and so that's really the homework I've been delving into, trying to put those two in, synchronized, in a synchronized way that really contrasts what we're going to show. So it's, uh, it's, it's a treat. And that's and that's the cool thing is if you see what's happening is that like you did in two minutes it was funded the initial funding yeah but the whole point is that's why when when you have your Kickstarter aside from getting all the cool stuff with the b bigger levels all that money you're putting back into the company yeah. and back into the project so that allows the more funding you get for your particular project and the same thing with you other guys once you get your goal. Keep pushing it because that will only be able to help you afford to do the next one. You can start putting those monies towards the next book, and your artists can get started working on it and to, to pay your artists and all. And, I mean, and in our case, case stay ahead of the game. You know, in our know? case, we're completely blessed. Yeah. We've been able to fold the money into a building that's an optimized warehouse for shipping, um, and, and it is a blessing. It's everyone getting paid a fair wage, commissions, bonuses. Christmas parties, uh, but all funding the activity. We're not, like, there's no boats. I mean, honestly, if you knew me, I actually drive a 2008 PT Cruiser. I mean, I have a fucking cool warehouse that's fucking rad, and I drive a PT Cruiser, you know, because I don't really care about it. Are you going to buy your Viper or your uh, no, it really, it really does horse go, like the it does. Guy? It does go back, even though we finished our headquarters, you know, I can let you know that I personally only consider the decor 50% done. So we're still working on all new initiatives of decor. Have you guys ever, have you guys seen pictures of this? Have you seen the museum? Anybody, anybody attend HQ? Oh, Be there? Right, so what was your impression of it? <laughs> I want one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's proof too that we fold money back into, you know, yeah. our activity for sure. Well, yeah, it's an amazing and uh, an amazing experience. And I hope you guys make a video of a whole yeah, tour of that and, and, and to make, I think it would be an amazing video. And we, what we've been doing is we've been doing a, a photographic essay through our newsletter. If you're not signed up to our newsletter, go to laydeath.com, upper right. Um, Louis, you've been there a couple times, right? Oh, yeah. I what do you it. think? I almost fell off my chair when you just said 50% done. I was going to say the detail of the place huh? is amazing. Thank it's you. So detailed and intricate. And it's definitely a love letter to everyone who contributes yeah. to us. It's definitely an expression. It's so cool. He's, Brian is such a meticulous guy about these things, and he's got so much history in just being an independent comic creator. You see, it's almost like a chronological order of his, his life in comics, and you see him from his early 20s and so on. You see designs from the earlier Lady Death statues and toys, and it goes, swings away, it swings around all to like a U-shape, and then you see the more modern stuff. And it's just a, it's a really neat, well thought out Thank thing, you. man. That's really nice. Bro. Thank you. It's so cool. And as a fan, it was awesome. It was awesome. Well, we are, um, we've actually, uh, we do have a professional film crew documenting it. We have a professional real estate photographer coming in in June. Like, I want to get it a little more decorated, and then we're doing pro shots. and to, wow. yeah, definitely to, to, you know, keep it going. Yeah. Now, now, does anyone out here want, uh, did anyone come here 
for the solar wind that they too, like anyone out there want to crowdfund your own book, do your own Kickstarter, your own Indiegogo? Does anybody want to do Show that? Hands. All right, cool. All right, so now uh, turn to, like I said, the king of Kickstarter, I call him. Brian, when you did the very first Lady Death Kickstarter, yep. were you nervous? I and am if, if, if you were, had, is now it's just an order of business, or how are you? Do you still get that feeling for the, you know, so? I'll let Jimmy Calabrese answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> And Jimmy well, Calabrese, this is uh, take a uh, stand up. This is Jimmy Calabrese, head of sales Jimmy. and marketing for Cause and Comics. Hey guys. Hey. 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 So, do we get nervous? Yeah, every time we don't want to assume anything. I know Brian, like like Joel says here, that it's um, Brian's very meticulous. All the ducks in the row, we have it all set up. But you know, first person to knock down that first domino and make it all go is is you guys. Yep. Uh, the fans and um, so yeah we don't want to assume anything we just want to make sure it's all good so yeah the excitement's always there we're always trying to uh, we never you know uh, lay on our laurels for the last we don't take the last successes as it's going to happen in the future so with you guys do the same thing always push to uh, make it better and don't assume it's going to be you know everyone's going to be there waiting for you because you know the winds could change so yep and then I'm going to give you the honest answer um I am inordinately nervous every Kickstarter. I haven't gotten past it, um, and particularly the early ones. And as a person prior to ever launching a Kickstarter, uh, the things that were raised up for me were things like, will people care? Will people show up? If I do it and it doesn't work, will I be a punk? So like all that normal human insecurity shows up. And uh, however, what I will say in my defense, how I was raised was even in the face of all my small feelings, I still push through. So I am totally willing to feel those nerves to this day mm. and still, but still push forward. So, uh, and I would impart that to you guys too. Um, Billy and I had conversations about this too. And, um, you know, I just think there comes a point where. You know, I think there's like for every person, there's a little me and a big me. You know, there's your little self and your big self. And I try to let, you know, big self talk to little self and say, go, go, go. And I understand the feeling of vulnerability that you would have when you put yourself out there. You like kind of put your heart out there. And I think that no matter where you begin in your journey for crowdfunding, it's perfectly fine. And you don't make it mean a lot. And then you just keep powering through. And as the emotions that come up, because it, it is an emotional experience, Everyone makes everything mean something emotionally about themselves. That's fine. Just deal with it and just keep dealing because it helps you get to the next place, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it, real quick, uh, so you were saying that when you're doing with Diego on the books, and, and I'm jumping back and forgive me, I'm sorry. Uh, do you right now, do you work from full scripts initially, but that he's so fast now, does, does sometimes your artist? Oh my God, I drew this page. This is not quite what I had, mm. but this looks really cool. Have you ever deviated from that a little bit because of the artist's work? Or? You know, I gotta say, um, with Diego, we've had a, a past artist where we, we had to make some adjustments, but Diego um, is pretty spot on. He always, and that's my favorite part of the process when you get those pages back and the, you know, the, the biggest compliment to people like Diego, um, Joel and Joel here, are when they give you those pages that just um, far exceed what you had in your imagination. You know, I can write something on a page, yeah. but they, they are making the story their own. Um, it's not just them um, translating what's on the page, it's them translating and putting themselves into the art. So, um, no, we have been really, since Diego and, and Joel have been working on the projects, um, we've been really lucky that we've I haven't had to really make you do anything over, right? No, no I usually <laughs> tell myself to do it over. I'm very tough on yourself. Yeah. I had, I'll, 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 I'll send stuff in and then I'll rethink it and go, this could look way better. And at the end of the day, it's, I, I just think about our book against other books and it's like, there's a lot of great books out there for you guys to pick from. And the price points, they're not cheap, you know? And it's the thing is that the advantage I feel we have at Coffin, at least I have with my book, I have an unlimited budget in the sense that these guys are really great with the schedule and, and what I can do with it. So I throw everything in the kitchen sink within those pages. If I can keep your eyeballs glued into our books longer than uh, some other comic, uh, the experiences, you get a longer and more enjoyable experience from it. And therefore, 
if you get more coffee comics and it just you're more involved in the story and the more I can get you involved in it and maybe even uh, participate in certain ways that we lay out certain panels or things like that uh, it just gets you it gets you more involved and you enjoy the book that much more I'd like to chime in too and then I uh, might I recommend we'll get into some serious mechanical stuff for people in kicks yeah but what I the most fun thing about a com writing a comic is saying a couple of key words that you hope in your mind will stimulate an artist to really bring forth something. They'll step into it and bring forth something that exceeds your expectation. Yeah. And that is the coolest thing. And Diego, I feel lucky because I have a long history of working with South American artists. I did it in the 90s and I have a lot of relationships to this day with those artists, the, the Ed Bennett, Mike Diodato Jr., Ivan Reese, etc. And they have a certain way of telling a story. So Diego comes from that specific tradition. He is a protege of Ed Bennis. And man, just the way they tell the stories, and the way, the way, I, the way I think, the way we think, and the way the stories are realized, it always exceeds the expectation. So it's, that's the fun thing of comics for me. It's like just like riding a wave. When it's not like that, it's the opposite. Yeah. What I would say with Joel too is, when I get to see the work, I'm an editor on La Muerta, and I get to see the, the work being realized far exceeding the words. Oh, in the storytelling, in the emotional resonance, that's the game. Because yeah. comic writers are only as good as the artist, I'm sorry to say. It's like a band. We're like in unison together. It is a band. Which someone's playing the drums. But I, and, and I gotta tell you, and I, I hope you can hear the passion in these three gentlemen oh, uh, in, in yeah. their voices. And that passion and that enthusiasm that you have, it's contagious. I mean, that's what helped with Lady Death in the very so. beginning. And, yeah. and your enthusiasm is contagious. So those of you out there who want to do your own books, right, be enthusiastic about it. Be positive about it. You know, there's so much crap on social media these yep. days. It, it, people have weaponized it in some weird, strange way. Stay away from, clear from all that. Stay positive. Stay focused on your thing and just push your books. And, and push your books, and, and I'm telling you, it'll happen. Yeah. You'll live in the comic book dream right here, and you guys are, are. putting it, and, and every one of your books, the production values get better every time, they, they look better, and they blow away, or they're on par with the number one Marvel DC books. Thank you. And, I mean, really is, and the people have gravitated towards it. So the thing is, do the best you can. As Joel was saying, he's hard on himself. If you're an artist and you don't like a page, redraw that page. I redrew of she number one, Every page over at least once. Yeah. Every page. And it helped out because first impressions are very, are, are lasting. Yes. Now, um, we've heard, of, we can tell the successes you've had. If you could tell some of them out there, um, out there, what are some of the mistakes you've made? What's something like you wouldn't do again? What is something you can, advice you can give to someone not to do? I mean, the first half, yeah, first half of my career is just the litany of all the mistakes, you know? No, I, I meant saying. for the Kickstarter. Okay. I for, I'm sorry, <laughs> for the Kickstarter. No, 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 no I meant for the, I'm sorry, I'm for, for the crowdfunding. For the crowdfunding, because we have mistakes. We have the like first, 10 minutes left. No problem, okay. So fast. All right, so real quickly, when we launched our first Kickstarter, upon the launch, we realized that when people back a tier or a reward, that's the only thing they could back. And we didn't understand the concept add-on. Yeah, we didn't, and so we, we built a Kickstarter that wasn't what they call quote unquote tiered, where it's like one item or two items or three items. And so you gotta deal with that item. Generally, that the limitation of most crowdfunding tools is a person could only pick one, so then you have to help and guide them if they wanna quote unquote add on or quote unquote over pledge. That was all kind of new to us. Now, now we get it and we work around, but it was a total shock in the beginning. It's like, oh, you can't pick all this stuff? So that's one. Well, that's an important one. That's uh, a, yeah, that's, I thought that, that's a big that, one. That was very, very broad. Yeah, you bet. Um, we have 10 minutes left. Let's, it's gone so fast. Let's uh, Q&A. Uh, yeah, could we, does anyone have any questions? Yet? Yes. Oh. How do you, since shipping keeps changing all the time. Yes, it does. And we ha I have done Kickstarters with my husband. Yes. Sometimes we realize that we have too many people in Australia. Oh, the COVID. The, stuff. How do you deal with Yeah, that? the overseas shipping. Yeah, so, okay, so now we're uh, happy to sidebar this with you too. I know that we're booth neighbors. Yeah. So we now do a certain amount of volume such that we don't use USPS alone. What we do is we aggregate our international shipping at one time and ship on Fridays only. And we use a couple of tools, which I can tell you about. We use we use the software ShipStation for our shipping management, 
and we use a, another provider for our international shipping, which has driven down the cost about 40%. Wow. The, the strategy is to aggregate all our international at once, mm -hmm. and we ship international Fridays only, and it'll help drive down the, the cost. So we, we no longer deal with retail shipping, mm -hmm. we ship with shipping partners that help us drive the cost down. Last year we shipped 13,500 individual orders, and so that gave us the strength due to the volume. But I can help you a little bit more, I can introduce you. We have a person in our company who only worries about logistical management of shipping. We, we build every tier and we weigh it, and we, uh, we do it with our stretch goal packs, we do it with the dimensional weight, the size, and I understand what you're saying about uh, shipping does change. If, if you have an actual rep from whether it's the United States Postal Service or all your carriers, they'll actually come in and they'll forewarn you. It happened to us on our second lady death where we got a shipping increase just out of nowhere. We had to eat it, particularly shipping a single Kickstarter to, let's say, France or UK became impractical. We want to keep those customers, so we improved the shipping. So we can help you with that. We're pals, so we can help. Someone came up to me, actually, and, and asked me a question, because we just did our first Kickstarter, about um, first class or sure. media mail. Have you shipped things media mail? Yeah, so in the, uh, this is the truth. In the strictest sense of the law, comic books that have any form of ad, comic books specifically, comic books, the saddle stitch staples, can't, can't be shipped media mail. And then they can't. And then uh, comic books or uh, books with advertising, even if it's your own advertising, by definition cannot be shipped. So an in-house ad, say for your website, can't be correct. And, okay. So and that's right there in the letter of the law. However, <laughs> uh, for a couple kicks, we shipped some media, and then we got dinged, and we sold. We were uh, we got dinged. They said you can't do it. And so then at that point we complied. So and because if we were to do it again, there'd actually be a, a criminal consequence. So uh, I, I'm just saying that, you know, once you're caught, you can't do it. Well, wouldn't a 48 page book though be like square bound? So would that technically count as a, as a comic book? Yeah. Okay. You know, pictures, uh, words and pictures together, uh, panels. So if you have... It's actually, it, it's actually said in the law, it's not comics. Oh, it and is. I know culturally a lot of people do do it. If you do, if you, if you change the comic to a magazine size, though, I think you can. Okay, and I can't, I, I don't know, so I'll take your word for that. Now, if you have, so if you have a 48-page square-bound book with no ads, can you ship that media mail then, or it's just comic books? I'll tell you what, I, I don't think I'm qualified to answer, but we can, I mean, if you guys really care, I, Nick has the answer. Because we read the law, we have to with our volume. So what's your booth? <laughs> uh, our booth is 752. Everybody go talk to Nick at 752. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Uh, yeah. Actually, just a quick comment. One of the things about the success of your Kickstarters is your communication. You haven't really, you guys didn't really talk about that. Okay. Lot, but that is Thank one you. of the things as a frequent Kickstarter supporter, you don't see that a lot on these mm -hmm. Kickstarters. And you guys knock it out of the park. Thank you. Because we know, we know when stuff's going to press, we know when you're getting them at the warehouse, so as a Kickstarter backer, we never have to guess where you're at. Thank you. And that, that's something every Kickstarter person out there should so be So maybe that's something you guys could imply. I actually view it as, uh, internally, we really view it like as soon as we have your money, it's your money till you have the product, and then it's our money. Even though we have it essentially in escrow and we're using it, so that we just have a feeling it's like it's not really ours, you know, until you have it. Um, how about updates? We update look, obsessively. Yeah. I mean, we update. Look, here's here's a quick right. Yes. <laughs> Is it too much? No. Uh -uh. So here's a quick one for all you uh, folks out there. Um, social media is great. Uh, mailing list is king. It just is. It tried and true through the decades. No matter who you are, just get a mailing list, start a newsletter, and we communicate every day of the week a different topic. So uh, Monday to our club, Tuesday to everybody, Wednesday's an update for all Kickstarters. Just let people know where we're going. And if we're if we're failing on something, we're upfront about it. Our original idea with uh, Scorched Earth was we're shipping in May. I think it was always unrealistic because 
we closed it April 7th. To even think that we would have ever hit May, particularly in the face of everything here, would have been, it was impractical. And so we updated people and say it's going to be uh, June 7th. So, yeah, so I think just be transparent. Don't be a liar. But also, I mean, here's one other concept, too. Um, this is the $10,000, like if you sat down and you paid me $10,000 to consult, this is what I would tell you, and I very rarely tell this to people. But here's the thing. What do you provide for people? What do you provide? This is what I stand for. I stand for fun and entertainment. I know, I know the unshakable truth. This is the unshakable truth. Life is hard. And everybody's got, everybody's got something going on. We all have our ups and downs. And you're not gonna know that about my life. Because I wanna provide something else to you. I wanna stand for something else. And I want us that we stand just for fun, for entertainment. So the question is for you guys and what you do. It's like, what do you stand for? What do you provide? And that will be the gateway for something else for you. You know, like I look at Billy Tucci. We've been boys since the day, but I, what Billy stands for me also is very similar. It's, it's fun. It's happiness. He has a gregarious nature. And when I step into his world, I just feel a little better. And so, like, what are you going to do? What do you do for the world? You know, uh, my complaint is complainers. Because I think it's easy. I mean, really try presenting fun all the time or, you know, being generally optimistic. I get it. The real truth is it's a tough, the world is a tough place. You know, so what are you going to do? So that really, really, really is the $10,000 one that I don't tell people about. Because we're super clear. If you go into HQ, you see the mission statement. You know, we're right there. It's like we're a fun, entertaining company. You know, it's what we provide for people. It, are, are we on track? Oh, yeah. And if you if you can't have fun in comics, yeah. if you can't have fun <laughs> making comic books, I always tell people it's like um, do what you love and love what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't you know don't say you're doing you love and then be bitter and complaining. It's like life is an obstacle course. It's a tournament. Like enjoy the challenge, rise to the occasion. You know, improve yourself on the journey. But, you know, and I think we have uh, three minutes left, I think, or two minutes. We went, it's, it's a 50 minute panel, right? Yeah. 50 minutes? I think so, unless they kick us out. I think we could go, I think we're scheduled at uh, 5.30. Uh, it ends at 5.30. Yeah. All right. Right oh, on, we're still going. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right, uh, no somebody else, did, did you have a question out there? Uh, well, I guess, yeah, um, the, the whole concept of the Tucci family, I mean, that's kind of like your family, right? Yeah. That's on topic. I, I, well, yeah. Uh, I'm always, I'm, I get confused because, so you have an idea, right? And then you give it to the writer, and he starts writing, and then the artist draws, but then the artist draws, and the writer goes, and it's very confusing so about how it all comes together. Okay. How do you guys work together? And, uh, well, in our case, I mean, my part, it, it really depends. So, it, and it depends on the property. How Mike and I work on Lady Death is, I, the best way to say it is we back the ball back and forth. It's like tennis. It's quite literally like tennis, like I might start with a paragraph, mm -hmm. and then we literally go back and forth, it just keeps going like this. And then he might take the lead on a piece, and I might take the lead on a piece, and we might wind up rewriting a couple of yeah. parts. As, a, as this thing, Extreme Horror Project 2020, how that seems to be starting is, I felt that I really wanted to express a certain plot, and a certain trajectory, and a milieu, a tone, attractors, and I actually then, in, which the document itself is about eight pages, and then I gave it to the team so that they themselves can start deciding. I mean, I think that I've done things where I've been like, in my case, like just, I write the comic 100%, Mike writes the comic 100%. I think in some of the stuff we've been moving towards more uh, collaboration, it's hard to tell who begins and ends it. I think I frequently, on Lady Death, I'm the originator, but that doesn't mean like I'm the completer, you know. I don't know what you'd add to that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's it exactly. I think uh, Brian has a very, very strong sense of story, and, and, and Lady Death is his baby. He knows where he wants to, to take it. So, um, yeah, we, and it's, it's so much fun as well that we're, we're missing on him, but we, we just kind of write each other back and forth notes and, and, and then uh, get the artist involved. Yeah, I mean, it's been a really organic process for me. I don't think, uh, I don't think I've worked on anything uh, so coherently with these guys and our colorists as I have on the laptop, and I think a lot of it is due to just the just the sheer number of pages together we worked on. We, actually, 
we're on six chapters, 48 pages each. Yeah, well, I start to really understand. Finishing your 300th page. Yeah, I'm finishing wow. 300th page. The line well. Yeah, well, the yeah. thing is, like, I've understood Mike better and I understand Brian better. So when I read certain lines that they have in the script, I get a sense of a tone, what they're going for, especially their response to previous pages. And so then I get an idea of, like, they really like this kind of thing or this kind of thing. And so then I also will throw something random in there, too. Uh, and then we'll come back, hey, that's awesome, but hey, you know what, not so much. Um, but that's all part of the process, and the thing is that the more comfortable I've become with them, the easier it gets to just try really weird off-the-wall shit, too, you know? And the, the thing, too, our colorist is so in tune with what we're doing, it really is like a band, and uh, that's the, my favorite part about this, is because it's, uh, it's in unison, and we're all kind of collaborating together. It's not like, uh, uh, one guy's done and then it goes to the next, you know, thing. It's like, no, there's always an active, fluid thing about it. I think we're pretty lucky, too. I mean, let me answer your question conventionally, like we were working for Marvel DC. I would, like, it, uh, I wrote, like, while the um, Nightmare on Elm Street Texas Chance of Massacre, I would write the story 100%, give it to an artist, and that was the last I'd be involved yeah. with it. That's not unusual. And so full script is common these days, so that's what happens on every page, every panel, the dialogue, and that's the last you see of it. We don't exactly do that here, and largely because, uh, for the reasons you said, it's, it is a collaboration, it's kind of organic, it's truly where the fun rests. Yeah. Like, uh, I feel it's sort of with Lady Death, it's like the story exists, we just have to pull it out, pull it out of our subconscious. And like we're, uh, in a great way, we're wrestling with chapter 12 right now. So it's like, okay, we got to a certain point. It's like, well, hang on, we're getting on this plane. Let me like mess with this. Okay, Mike, I want to throw this curveball out. You know, that kind of stuff. It's like, you know what, can we, let's start the story in the middle and then backtrack and, uh, yeah. And in our case, I mean, let me go on the record. Collaborating with our collaborators that we're working on is the most phenomenal experience. Uh, you know, particularly, it's, awesome. it's amazing. Working with Mike on story, on the story element uh, is, just a blast, you know, receiving the pages in from Joel's is really incredible. It's not like there'd any, there literally would not be anyone else on the planet that I would do this with. The cookie thing is like we met at, we just met at a panel at Comic -Con. Phoenix Comic Con seven years ago. Yeah. And we are very, very different in many ways, but in terms of talking about architecture of story, we're really, I think we're similar. Yeah, very much so. Um, I think I think we have similar influences in our, in our DNA. You can see yeah. that. Those, um, but definitely, Brian is a, definitely a big story guy, and, and that's it's, it's a very big help um, when, when you have something as big as Lady Death to create. It's funny you say that too, and I think that we just have different strengths. Like I think, uh, I mean, you're you're amazing on plot, and I'm always looking for character moments. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, let's build everything around this moment. I don't know, who knows? I mean, it kind of after a while, it's hard did, to tell. You, did you uh, grow up a, a monster guy or a horror guy yourself? Myself? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to, to the extent, I was always a comic book guy, of course, like, just like everybody else. But if, uh, yeah, I loved the monsters, loved the horror. I was, if anybody's from here, uh, I grew up watching The World Beyond. Anybody from originally from Arizona? No? no. A lot of crickets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday morning movies. All you from Arizona? Yeah. Monster yeah. movies. And yeah, with Ryan, I grew up, we had that 4.30 movie, and Monster Week would come around. Dude, chiller. Oh, with the six fingers. Chill. Chiller, yeah. creature feature, the 4.30 <laughs> movie. It's yeah. Giant Monster Week. The Monster Week movie. was the greatest thing, oh. because you're like, it was a, you know, the 4.30 movie? Correct. Right. It was Monster Week. It That's was like, right. wow. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, what I would do was, this is for VCRs and all, I had a tape recorder, and I would tape wow. the movies, and, I, and I, I could recite the lines of so many movies like that, you know, and I would just run the tape recorder, Moth Rotten, you know, that's <laughs> exactly. Anyway, um, any questions yes. that would help you? Yes. Uh, what's your opinion on Indiegogo? Would you normally yeah. suggest Kickstarter, or would there be well, a reason to go with Indiegogo? Well, I gotta tell you. Uh, my eyes have lit to yeah. Indiegogo because there used to be this strategy that really wasn't working exactly uh, begin in a Kickstarter and jump to Indiegogo but finally my boy over here did Zombie Samba he began it on Kick and then flipped over to Indiegogo so I think actually we're exploring the possibility of doing the next lay death do the full campaign on Kick and then get new exposure on indie, like another ten or twelve days yeah. on indie, because it's just a different culture over yeah. there. I, 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 I learned that there are people that will only purchase from Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and there are people that will only purchase from Indiegogo. Yeah. So our twenty-eight day 
for Zombie Sama, my little zombie book with my partner, John, John Brolia, uh, we did over $32,000 in the 28 days on that. We did over that in two in our two week campaign on Indiegogo. So now we're at over six, we're almost at sixty eight thousand dollars. And you know that's that great because that, yeah, that's what you're going to need to produce this book, right? Oh yeah, because already doing the shipping and stuff, and that's another thing. Look at shipping. Listen to him because of the sixty seven. We're over thirty thousand dollars in in production costs and shipping costs. So it's not like. Oh wow, we made sixty-seven thousand dollars. You get it all. Yeah. And the more books, the more money you make, the higher the shipping cost. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, right. Everything, everything relative to the scale. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be super careful, guys, yeah. with your um, your supply costs. You got to control it all. Ship can yeah. screw you. The more that you could think towards the end, like you could, you build your tiers, you weigh them, you do mock-ups, you do estimates. It, it'll really help so that you could kind of you can squeeze out a profit which could then be applied to the next piece. to the next book yeah and, it, and and remember this is a business yeah you have to look at it like a business it's fun but right. but the bottom line is to make money so you can make more yeah I mean, our whole, <laughs> that's our whole thing is like yeah. we live to, we want to live to fight another day right. and capital is a resource that keeps us going telling stories right lightning round any more quick yes. questions Lee, I understand Lady Death isn't the only one celebrating a 25th anniversary. That's right. Who else is celebrating a 25th anniversary? She is celebrating 25th anniversary, and for the for the San Diego Comic Con, I think we have a little little secret. If you wouldn't mind, uh, oh, okay. Panel, if you don't mind, we have a little something fun. Well, uh, Billy and I are antique relics of independent comics yeah. publishing, yeah. but we're also friends in real life and uh, brothers. I would have to say, I have a lot of uh, a lot of a tremendous amount of affection. And we decided for fun, we're gonna do a crossover cover crossover where uh, both Lady Death and she are gonna be in a battle. Yeah. And it'll be she number one with she on the cover, Lady Death number one with Lady Death on the cover, but together they'll form one image. Yeah. yeah and uh, Billy's doing all of the art. Yeah, but it's due on the third. Yes. Uh, you, uh, I'm all right, that's what I'm doing next week. Right. On. I can't wait. And yeah, no. I figured the idea that Brian came up with an idea for, and I love sharing this with you. Yeah, we're uh, sort of like, you want, let's back pose it. it. Yeah, all right, all right, let's right, pose it. I'll be laying down. We're sort of like, you know, we're both like back to back. Like, like that. Right, yeah. however it's going to be. Yeah, the knocking out is going to go to the other side. And yeah. what I'm thinking here is that she will be fighting in a, in a, in a, uh, in a, in an antique, uh, you know, um, 16th century battlefield. Yes. Samurai. Great. With cherry blossoms blowing like this, oh, and you nice. see your enemies. And then the cherry blossoms, as they start to cross by she's face, start turning to burning embers. Burning embers. And the burning embers. embers go to the Lady Death side, yes. and now we're in <laughs> hell. <laughs> and the spears will be going across both sides, and there's Right, and the weapons of all their enemies coming towards yes. us. It's going to be sick arrows. If time permits, dude, battle damage variant. What? <sighs> We, get them, we have them clean, and then we have them just like, you know, battle damage. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying we should do that. Little tear. Yeah. Coy. Yeah. Well, we're willing to be naughty. I know you're Oh, yeah. We respect your thing. Yeah. We're just down. Like I said, I'm the kid brother you never wanted, so I'll do whatever you want. Um, another thing, but just important things that, that we, we're moving so fast. That idea of every Wednesday, at least, you send out an update. Your Kickstarter update to your fans, or your, or your just your company updates. Right? I mean, look at it in a real practical sense. You know, uh, your backers are your customers; they are your culture, and you. I feel you owe them communication. So, and it's reasonable. You know, it, I always say to try to uh, make it entertaining. You know, let's say if something happened that's not great, be really straight about it, but you know, own it and move on and do better next time. You know, don't get super dramatic about it; just be straight about it. And, and as a personal note, I just want to thank you and. One of my greatest joys is when my Lady De Death box comes in, there's always a little smiley face that says, Hi, Billy. And I don't know, I don't know who does something. It's just a heart over the eye. Or something. Does the heart. Yeah, she does a little heart. And, like, hey, and, then, and it's on the thank you letter or the, or the report, you know, like the, the, the invoice, say. Yep. And then and you always sign it, you know, to my yep. boy. And That's right. Sign it, uh, and it's great that he knows it's mine. Instead yep. of just like... There you, go, you know what I mean? Like, oh, this is Billy's. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's wonderful. It thank really you. Is. I mean, you see that we do process a lot of orders, but they really are individually cared for, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I think we should, we owe uh, Mike, uh, Brian, and uh, uh, Chief Dale's one with Joel. Joel. <laughs> yeah, Joel. That guy. Give me Joel. No. Uh, I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, because I was trying to say his last name again, and I keep saying it wrong. The way it's or the way it's not wrong. I keep saying it wrong because it's spelled. Uh, and then I was stumble over that. But we can give these guys a round of applause. This Thank you.
Where can people find you, Billy? Um, I'm in Artist Alley, and uh, I, uh, I don't know where I can listen. <laughs> where can people find you, Joel? Yeah, I'm next to Joel. And he's at 1806. There you go. Michael's going to be doing a signing at uh, Coffee and Comics booth 752 tomorrow between 2 and 4. And, and you have a lot of ex you have exclusives available here for the. We have all kinds of shenanigans. Come visit us if you have any further questions on uh, crowdfunding. Mike, did you want to make an announcement about some more panels tonight? Yeah, in about half an hour, actually. Dang it! So I'm doing a screenwriting panel. So I'm originally a screenwriter, and it's going to be in North 127 about uh, plot and structure. So if anybody's interested in screenwriting, come on down. Do it. And yeah, you learn a lot. And our mics just picked up. So all of a sudden, there it is. You guys have been great. We've been coughing comics and. Billy Tucci crusade in the house. Yes. Yeah, Can we give you guys some flyers? Thank you guys. Thank you.